Welcome to our students. And if you would kindly silence your phones for the next hour, I would appreciate it. And the students, if you would leave your yellow attendance form on the table in the lobby, um, right outside on the first floor. Um, thank you for attending IUP's Center for Family Business, business recognition, presentation in honor of the McEnany families. Pennsylvania has a rich heritage of family-owned businesses. Family businesses employ more than 62% of America's workforce and produce 64% of our gross domestic product. Family businesses also comp comprise approximately 90% of all business enterprises in North America. IUP's Center for Family Business provides educational forums to these families. Annually, we honor the best, a family who has excelled in their industry, one who has contributed significantly to their community, and is preparing to succeed to the next generation, or is already exceeded to the next generation. Today, we are privileged to honor the McEnany family, owners of one of Western Pennsylvania's most successful businesses, McEnany Brothers Incorporated. I'm Elizabeth Gregg, Director of the Center for Family Business, and I would like to, to thank, a special thanks to Representative Ron Nocco from the Legislative Office of Congressman Schuster for attending, and Indiana County Commissioner Rod Ruddick, who also serves on the Center's Advisory Board. Thank you also to our sponsors. Without our sponsors, the center would definitely be challenged. And I'd like to take a minute just to read those, those sponsors to you. s and Bank, the Reschini Group, Rothman Gordon, Huntington Bank, Hagee Transportation, Snyder Associated Companies, Merrill Lynch, Tiger Paint, Diamond Drug, Wilmoth Interest, First Commonwealth Bank, Indiana First Bank, Brian Wall, Mass Mutual, The Lockard Company, Friends of Don White, Colonial Motors, Kuzneski and Lockard, Meckling Agency, Romeo's Pizza, Philadelphia Square Apartments, Sapinka and Sapinka, Smith Lewis Chess and Company, and Putt Real Estate. Thank you also to Dr. Camp. Dr. Robert Camp has been Dean of the Eberly College of Business and in Information Technology for the past 31 years. He administers an AACSB International Accredited Business Program with over 2,500 majors and approximately 75 faculty and staff. Eberly College has been recognized with inclusion in the Princeton Review's Best Business Schools regularly since 2005. Dr. Cam. Good morning. It's a pleasure for me to be able to introduce our president who will provide official greetings for the university. Dr. Driscoll is a trained electrical engineer. In fact, at one time he served as dean of the School of Engineering at Portland State University. He subsequently served as executive vice chancellor and provost for the University of Alaska. He's now been with us for, he's, he's finishing his sixth year. He's certainly been a highly successful president for us and he was the right person at the right time. He's been a great supporter of our efforts to reach out to the regional community around us. And we're pleased that he's be here this morning to help uh, us celebrate the long-term success and good citizenship of the McEnany Brothers, Inc. So please join me in thanking Dr. Driscoll for being here to share this event with us. Good afternoon and welcome, afternoon, sorry, it's been a long day already. Good morning and welcome. Um, I first would like to acknowledge uh, both Beth Gregg and uh, Dean Camp for putting this event together. 
um, for their great work in all things, and in particular today in the Center for Family Business. So thank you both. I have to say that this program every year is one of my favorite things to do. It illustrates something that's very much what IEP is about, getting students together with folks who are out there in the world on the forefront of commerce, people who are making things happen so that the students can learn from them. And I have to say that I always learn something about doing my job in the presentations, and I look forward to that again today. No pressure, folks. Um, it's also a very nice thing, as Beth had indicated, that the businesses we honor with this event are family-based, and that's so important. In the course of my work, I travel a great deal across Pennsylvania and occasionally to eastern Ohio if I must. And it occurs to me that I've no doubt consumed many products that have been supplied by the McEnany brothers. Although I think I have to confess that I never really knew that I was doing that until now. And I suppose that's the way your business goes. The B2B stuff, your work goes largely unrecognized by the public when you do it right. So it's a good sign that I didn't know you were there in the background, perhaps. Imagine what it would be like and the outcry if we couldn't access those things we take for granted when we enter a store in a hurry to look for a quick bite to eat or a much needed cup of coffee or to grab the few things we might have forgotten in our rush to go from one place to another in the world. And I also recognize that if it weren't for businesses like yours, some of the smaller shops that don't have that big conglomerate behind them to rely on and to protect them, they wouldn't be able to stay afloat without you, and that's so important in so many ways. So let's get down to the real point of why we're here today. We are here to celebrate family-owned business because family-owned businesses are the real backbone of our economy. As Beth indicated, they supply well more than half the jobs in our country, and that alone is important to acknowledge. But we also know that family-owned businesses are invested in their communities. They take care of their communities. The owners live in the communities where they conduct business, and they're good neighbors. So the McKennany family, to you, thank you for the part you play in Cambria and surrounding communities. Thanks for making sure the little guys in communities in Pennsylvania, New York, Ohio, West Virginia, and Maryland can flourish and do flourish. And most important, congratulations on the well-earned award you're receiving today. And the next time I promise that I'm on the road and when I stop in at a convenience store, I'll remember you and the exact reason that I can get that jolt or bite that I need and what it means to all the people who are working there and all the people around them. So thanks for what you do with great appreciation. And again, congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Driscoll. It is my honor to introduce Steve McEnany, president of McEnany Brothers, brother of Tom and Joe, first generation of the McEnany Brothers. Steve is going to start our program with introductions of his family and management team. Steve. Wow. Thank you very much. I'd like to start by uh, asking a question. So how many of you have brothers and sisters? How many of you have wished them well, have told them you love them recently? Thank you for that. It's an important, it's a very important question when you're in business with family. So, I start with thank you. It's an honor to be here today. Thank you, Dr. Driscoll, for the kind words. Thank you, Dr. Camp, for the invitation to present our story today, and Beth Craig, and everybody who works at the IUP Center for Family Business. And on behalf of everybody that works at McNenny Brothers, our entire management team here today, we're privileged and honored to accept the recognition which you are bestowing. My name is Steve McEnany again, and these are my brothers, Tom and Joe. We started in business in 1979, 
Very soon we'll be celebrating 45 years as a first generation family business. All of you have to know that it uh, has been 45 years without an argument, without a discussion, <laughs> without any disagreement, and if you believe that, I'll sell you the college for a dollar. Uh, I'm charged with introducing many people here today, so uh, we, we couldn't do what we do without the help of so many. So I start with my brother Peter and his wife Joyce. Pete was president of Kennywood Entertainment in Pittsburgh, another family business. He was also a shareholder of Snyder Downs, a public accounting firm in Pittsburgh. And of course, over the years has been our financial tax advisor and has been charged with the task of keeping us pointed in the right direction. Not an easy job by any stretch. Joyce just retired from the Women's Center and Shelter in Pittsburgh. She's an advocate, was an advocate for hundreds and perhaps thousands of women needing help trying to turn their lives around. My sister Rebecca, she is here and she's the only uh, daughter of, with four brothers and has uh, been a real help to uh, what we do each and every day. She's with her husband Dale. He, they have a video media business in Johnstown, another family business called Wix Picks Production. The first of many, Dale is both an IUP alum and holds a bachelor and master de degree from IUP. There's a lot of family members that have attended this, starting way back with my grandmother, can you believe this, and her two sisters. They graduated sometime from what was called the Indiana Normal School in 1911. My dad's cousins, uh, Ann and Rosarita and Mary McEnany, and our Aunt Kate Lovett, all graduated sometime in the 1940s from this same university as teachers. I'd like to recognize my wife, Cindy. We've been married 42 years, and we've been blessed with three children and three grandchildren. My daughter, Kelly's with us. Kelly's an inside sales representative and help manages our inside sales staff of eight professionals who call on many key accounts. My daughter Beth is an IUP grad with a bachelor's degree in hotel, restaurant, and institutional management, and also a culinary degree from uh, the IUP Culinary Institute. She's currently tasked with growing our prepared food business and in the grocery and convenience stores. My son Steve now leads a team of five professional sales counselors specializing in the grocery store industry and is charged with the task of coordinating a sales effort in our territory, which is about a 150 mile radius from Evansburg, PA. My brother Tom and his wife, they've been married 37 years. They've been really blessed with children. Five out of their seven have attended IUP. Matt, sitting up front, a graduate of IUP and is now our inbound, outbound freight manager. We operate 24 hours, six and a half days a week and he is in, responsible for the entire operation of ma making sure our customers receive their orders in absolutely perfect condition and just what they ordered. And. Tom Second is also an IUP grad, and she is responsible for uh, purchasing many items that we carry in our inventory, candy, snacks, bakery, prepared food categories, uh, a very time-consuming task. Tom's middle, Mark, another IUP alum, is in the purchasing department, buying produce from all parts of our country. Uh, potatoes, onions, watermelons, western fruits are a couple examples, and he's also helping institute uh, and fine-tune our quality control in that department. Uh, nothing surer than as soon as it's picked, it's, it, of course it's uh, rotting, so the produce business under Gino's uh, tutorial has been very good. 
I want to make a point here, just because we're a family business doesn't mean we all have to work in the family business. Some have tried and, and have found another avenue to, uh, with their life. Not all Tom's kids, two out of, the, uh, out of his seven, had chosen another path. Tim worked a few years in the business as an outside rep and was a supervisor on our night shift. Tim has chosen a different path. He now owns and operates his own family business, a dog obedience training company. Molly is an IUP grad and high school English teacher at Bishop McCourt Catholic High School in Johnstown. But we couldn't neglect Molly, who didn't choose her to work with us. Instead, we were honored to have her husband, Andy, who is also an IUP grad, and he has since joined our IT department. They just welcomed their second child into the world a couple weeks ago. Congrats. TJ, who is, all, who is a Penn State grad, not sure how he got there, Bruce, <laughs> works for a regional construction remodeling company currently living in Baltimore. Tom's last, youngest, tallest son, Neil. Neil works in our transportation department, uh, probably more detailed than being in the medical field today, what he has to learn and what he has learned and what he has done to help McEnany Brothers maintain a fleet of refrigerated trucks and trailers and a 172 square foot warehouse with so much refrigeration and we also operate some convenience stores or grocery stores. So Neil has been charged with overseeing and, and helping oversee all those tasks. He also can hit a golf ball a country mile. The guys, the guys playing golf this weekend have nothing on Neil. My brother Joe, he's married to Lois. They have a son Joe who is with us. And they have Kate. Kate is eight. Will be soon the second generation stepping up. And we'd love to welcome them into the family business someday. I'd like to remind all of you about the old cliche, beside every great man or woman is an equally great supportive partner. And in this case, in our case, it's been our wives who have really supported all our efforts and have pushed us to achieve higher goals. Without their willingness to sign loan documents and uh, let us go continually do what we're doing, it would never have been possible to be here today. Now, I haven't mentioned my mom and dad. People often think about my dad as the uh, starter of a family business, McEnany Brothers, but he didn't. He was a World War II vet, went to Notre Dame, then ended up after the war at the University of Nebraska with a law degree. Came back to Cambria County, and found it was too difficult to support his family with a law degree. Uh, started having a family as soon as they got back and as soon as the war was over. That's apparently what most World War II veterans did. Came back, found a job, and had a family. My dad was no different. He was a member of the state legislature for eight years representing Johnstown and he was a vice chair in the House Appropriation Committee. Later, he was appointed by Governor Casey to the Unemployment Compensation Board and later was appointed uh, to the PA Worker Compensation Board of Review. So I say that Dad had absolutely no idea about this business. My mother had even less. So as we go on, it, uh, it is really quite a story. As good as my dad was, it was my mother who really taught us how to work. They would be so proud of us today. We grew up in Johnstown, had a great neighborhood. There were lots of kids in our neighborhood and lots of really good people. Two doors down from us was the Harry Helsel family. I want to introduce their daughters, Betsy Helsel and Joan Stofko, a wave ladies. Betsy and Joan's mom and dad, Harry and Mary Jo Helsel, had a wholesale business 
only a few block, few doors from our home. And it was probably the first job for many, many of our neighbors, including myself. It was the first job, and in my case, pretty much my only job. They were so gracious with their time. They gave us so many opportunities to learn how to conduct yourself, how to respond to people, just how to be nice. You'll find if you're nice, if you always tell the truth, no matter what career you, you uh, choose, you will be successful. We delivered orders, we cleaned up the storeroom, we generally did whatever Mr. and Mrs. Helso asked us to do. It was a great summer job, we loved it. All of us at one time or another worked there. When the Helsels, Harry and Mary Jo, started talking about retiring, which I'm taken back by, it, is exactly the same age as I am today, yikes. I said to my parents, you know, Mom and Dad, we could do this if given the opportunity. We were young. I was 23, Tom was 21, Joe 17, just finishing high school. Uh, very few words that I could say about that, except I'll let my mom and dad pick up the story. We're going to play a little video from my mom and dad that we did in 2004 when we celebrated 25 years in business, which is 20 years ago. So take it away, mom and dad. In the very beginning, we had basically nothing. Joey was still in high school. Tommy was, had not graduated from Pitt yet. Stephen had graduated and had already worked one year for Harry. Harry was a lot of fun. He was a very interesting man, taught us an awful lot about business, often a lot about life. So it was, a, it was a challenge, but he taught us a lot, taught us uh, how to treat people. And when Harry was ready to retire, wanted to close it up, Stephen, prevailed upon me to help him seek finances for buying the business from Harry. Looking back and me having three grown children today, thinking what I do, what my mom and dad did, I really question, I'm not sure I could give everything I own for, for a, a chance. And that's what they did, so it's just remarkable. On January the 1st, 1979, young Stephen and I went over to the Dale Bank, Sun West, and uh, signed the final stuff and gave the check to Harry. And one of my fondest memories is a picture of us shaking hands outside the bank that morning. And that's pretty much the way it started. We started out with one station wagon, one little van, and six people. And that included Joey and I and Stevie, so we really only had three other people who worked for us. We had a shop on Franklin Street in Johnstown. Um, back then we were into the stuffed animals and the carnival and the bingo. Um, we sold some candy. Tom and Joe and John Sherrick would go out and write orders and they would get back and we would fill those orders and the next day we'd load them in the van and take them out. We had probably, you know, 20 to 30 stores that we dealt with and we had, I think, maybe two vans that we delivered in. I always remember, you know, the, the stock room was basically underneath the building and uh, so, you know, at, at the end of the, the day shift we'd go down and basically stock all the stuff to be, for the orders to be picked that night and then be loaded you know, the next morning into the vans. Basically, I mean, I can remember being in that basement, the Easter candies coming and it was a big deal. We would get 200 and some cases. It was a big deal because you picked up every single case and put it away because there wasn't, a, there wasn't anything. I remember getting a set of rollers and thinking we were gods. I can remember carrying two buckets of pickles up out of the cellar. I, between my weight and the pickles, I wondered how the stairs held it up. And you had to go up and down the steps carrying 
cases of candy and across the street over into the other one. Walked across Franklin Street probably four million times <laughs> from one side of the office to the other. And uh, We hand wrote everything. It was incredible. You hand wrote every invoice. You sat there and you added up every invoice. And inventory, there was no such thing as inventory. You went and you counted it. We didn't really get a whole lot in when we first started, so you could pretty much, you know, count it in your head and take your shoes off and use your toes a little bit. And you went down and you counted the inventory and you put the date on it. And then you said, well, I guess we should order maybe 10 of those. What do you think, 10? Oh, yeah, that's a good thing to order. I don't know, we enjoyed it and we thought we could, uh, we thought we could make a living at it if we kept coming to work every day. And I think we've proved that. Takes me back watching that video because there's many of those people I'd like to recognize today and understand that video is 20 years old and every single one of those people in that video are still working with us at Magnetti Brothers. So I'd like to say thank you to them. Uh, we can't do it alone. So in the video today we have Bob Hassey along with his wife here today. Bob is now our general manager who is entirely charged with running day-to-day -day operations of McEnany Brothers. Uh, quite a job and he's doing very well. We like to consider uh, Bob in a few years, he'll look somewhat similar. He's well on his way and I hope this job doesn't end up causing the rest. He's been with us since 1984 hard to believe, probably one of the only jobs Bob has ever had. Uh, so we're honored, Bob. Thank you, Bob and Becky, for being here. Bruce Smith is our CFO and trusted advisor today. Don't hold it against him. I do. He's a Penn State grad, also a CPA. Uh, Gino Tarquinio with his wife, Isabella. Gino is the head of our produce department. Uh, like to say the day we walked into the produce business, Joe met Gino and he's been a McEnany Brother employee for as long as truly I can remember. Uh, he has grown what we, we are in the produce distribution business and it's through his efforts that he has uh, es established something really special. Michael Costanza, he's our accounts receivable manager and has been with us since 1989. Mike started as a CDL truck driver. He was probably one of our first drivers of what we called a, a bigger truck that we acquired. Uh, has since gone through the ranks and has done a wonderful job in our accounting department. John Sherrick is here with his wife, Karen. He's probably the second employee we hired. I don't think John has had a another job, started in 1980. We started in 79, a year later John joined us. Remarkable, thank you for that. I'd like to recognize Bob Clark, a lifelong friend. He's been overseeing and writing our insurance since my dad stepped away from that. Uh, dad likes to say he kept his insurance license to ensure that he was writing our business. I think it, uh, for the last five years, it was probably his only account. So Bob has taken over that, uh, have known Bob all my life, and really appreciate him being here. Uh, a lesson as we stand here, business cannot exceed, succeed without a great financial institution, and, and you need to develop that relationship and it takes time and it takes uh, effort and it, it's imperative that a bank understand your business and a bank buy into what you do each and every day and the belief they have in you to repay what they're giving you. So we have two individuals today here with us, Michael Price and Gary Platt from First Commonwealth Bank. Thank you, gentlemen. Gary has been our loan officer and certainly has taken the time to learn and understand our business. Of course, he must sell our plan, what we sold to Gary, 
he then takes to the bank board and asks the trustees to go ahead and loan three gentlemen money with the knowledge that they will be repaid. So once Gary does that, the bank approves, and of course with Mike's blessings over the years has uh, certainly bought into what we're doing. Uh, without their help, you know, uh, you can't do it alone like I started with. You'll never do this alone. You have to have people that believe in you and believe what you can do and what you set out to accomplish. Always remember that. One of the most important things I'd like to tell you today that nobody can build a business alone. You need a lot of great people and we have been blessed over the years with some of the best. Very dedicated, uh, willing to do whatever needed. We never have to really ask and say, can you stay, can you do that? They accept the job in front of them and work till it's completed. I have one thought for you today. Today is about family business. For me, the emphasis is family. When we needed to borrow money, went to start, 23, 21, 17, our mom and dad graciously accepted and signed uh, a loan document pledging every asset they owned in life. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that uh, Peter uh, was our accountant way back then. He's a lot older than we are. So he took us to many, many financial institutions, and of course we were laughed out of every single one of them. So uh, we held the last bank, which was the Dale National Bank in 1979. Uh, Dad, full well knowing that we had a chance to get that approved, Peter put a plan together with the Small Business Administration, uh, accepting partial responsibility of a known, and the Dale National Bank president, along with their board, approved the loan that put us into business. Well, it took me not long to, to say, boy, why didn't you go there first, Dad? Because the president of the Dale National Bank was in my dad's wedding. How convenient. He also stood up, and I'll never forget it, after signing the loan documents, stood up, gave my dad a hug, and said, Joe, that's the dumbest thing I ever saw a father do. I, I tell everybody that story because my parents had total belief in what we could do. My mother knew the work ethic she instilled in us. And today, that's what you have to have that in your inner self. It, it's not going to be easy, but nothing in life worthwhile is, e is easy. So there's a risk. There's always a risk in business, and there's a risk in everything you do. So when you finish today and you have an idea to start a tech company, you have an idea to do whatever, go to your parents, go to your brothers, go to your sisters, and ask them, do you know what, I have a great idea. All I need is everything you have. Sign the paper. Uh, but, but today, uh, we're privileged and honored to accept this award, to accept the recognition, but there are there always will be difficult days for all of us, but today it's about family and the love of one another and what we do for each other to support each other. And again, I, I end with, uh, it's been an honor and a privilege to work with my brothers, to work with our family. Many of these 20, 30, 40 year employees are family today. Uh, they have totally, taught us how to treat people, what we should do each and every day. So again, I end with, remember, it's, easy, it's easiest to hurt the people you love the most. I've never once called Tom or Joe an idiot, honest. But you have to say you're sorry, you have to say we can do better, and wake up each and every day to do the best job you can do. That's what McEnany Brothers, that's what our employees are tasked to do. We want to have uh, our customer satisfaction 100%. We want to sell the perfect order. So again, Tom, now you 
for charge with the rest. Good morning, and thank you. It really is nice to be here today. I just want to thank everybody once again for coming and listening to our story. So I'm going to tell you some of our story. It's really difficult to try and collapse 39 and a half years down into about 20 minutes, so I'll do the best I can. My brother Steve is right. Uh, you have to be willing to take a chance. Life's a chance, let's face it. Our parents were, and it wasn't a quick decision, and a family business is very difficult. It's not easy. But I can honestly tell you, though, that it has given us a sense of accomplishment, a, a sense of self-worth. And I believe every person needs that feeling in their life. They need something that they can latch on to and say, that's mine. When we started in 1979, we were just trying to grow the business. That's really all we were doing. We were, we were selling the same things that Mr. and Mrs. Helsel sold. And along the way, if we found some other things that we could sell, of course, we would, we would buy it and try and sell it. So not only were we, were we wholesaling, cigarettes, tobacco, and candy. But we also had novelties, and we sold bingo supplies and crayons and coloring books. We sold plush animals. We sold music boxes. We sold a lot of Christmas items. We sold pocket radios where, you know, you have to put a little nine-volt battery in it and pull the antenna up and turn it on and hope you, hope you got a station. That's the way it was back then. We sold a lot of terrible towels. Uh, uh, Steeler merchandise after the Steelers got into the, some of the Super Bowls, it was really, uh, it was a lot of fun. But the goal for us was always to increase sales and by getting our customers to buy more from us. Of course, we were always trying to get new customers and we did it pretty much one by one, same as anybody else would do. We picked up grocery store accounts, we picked up little corner stores, we picked up gas stations, pretty much any place that would give us an order, we were, we were going to it and we were calling on it. So the story starts a few years down the road. Uh, it was like Christmas 1984, and my brothers ran into uh, the owner of a company in Johnstown called GK Drug and Cigar. And after some pleasantries, uh, he proceeds to say, why don't you guys come and talk to us? We might be interested. So we had no idea what was going on, but okay. So after Christmas was over, of course, we went and talked to him. And believe it or not, that started the process of us buying their company. And this was all happening really fast. We just couldn't believe that, uh, you know, we were going to buy another company. You know, we were, we were very young. Uh, of course, we asked Gary Platt, before we even went there, if the bank would loan us money. Because we had only been in business about five years. We had learned a lot, but we were still a very young company, and we still had our first loan. So we just didn't know how the bank would react to us. At this point, Steve is 28, Joe's 22, and I'm 26. And again, we just weren't sure the bank was going to give us any more money at all. But we went to Gary, and you know he put together the loan package, and he went to the board, and to our surprise, the board said, sure, we'll give you the money. So we bought GK Drug. And when that took place, we almost doubled our sales, which was really big for us. The increased volume made it easy for us to place orders with our vendors. Because before then, that was, that was a struggle. It put us into territories that we had never been before. And of course, it gave us a whole new set of customers to go after. And that's really what we were all about. We wanted the customers. So we moved from our old building on Franklin Street to the GK building. 
Looks like the Taj Mahal, doesn't it? Uh, which was even older, but it was a much larger building. It was five stories and it had an elevator in it. So moving in, moving the two companies and consolidating it all together and with a quick remodel of that building, we moved in. And, you know, we started really trying to take care of our customers because, let's face it, customers is what makes a business go. We had always been very customer oriented. That was something that Mr. and Mrs. Helsel taught us early on. You, you got to take care of the customer. The customer is number one. After our GK drug experience, we began to see buying competitors as a way to grow our, to grow our business. And eventually, over the years, we would acquire another six or seven companies. The next little part is a part about a company called Glosser Brothers, which was a family business, and it was located in Johnstown. And this was about 1986, so it's only about two years after we had bought GK Drug. And Glosser Brothers had a chain of 23 department store slash grocery store stores in four different states. Uh, the stores were called GB, and they were really kind of like, uh, kind of like Walmart almost. You know, they had a grocery store on one side, and on the other side they had a department store. And they were very large stores. And of course, uh, you know, we were thrilled to death to be able to sell them anything. So we started out slow. Uh, you know, we were just selling them a little bit of candy, a little bit of tobacco, and maybe some seasonal items, maybe something that they ran short on, whatever it was, Easter, Christmas, Valentine's Day, whatever. But the business really changed for us when David Glosser, he was third generation in his family business. He was a young guy just like us. And he was appointed GB's new candy and tobacco bar. David was willing to buy from us and needless to say, we were thrilled to death because it was really big business for us. But the story here with Glosser Brothers was that David really forced us to become better organized. He made us put together planograms. I hope everybody knows what a planogram is. It's a, it's a section where you know, you designate what goes on every shelf and you fix the prices and whatever. We had never done that before, so this was all foreign to us. He also made us put labels on every single one of their cases that also had a Glosser Brother purchase order on that label. Well, I can tell you, he really pushed us, and at times we didn't like it. But, you know, in the end, he made McEnany Brothers a better business. He really did. So I guess the lesson in all of this is that everything in life will be some sort of compromise. We, were, we loved the Glosser Brother business, but to keep it, we had to change, and we had to change to satisfy the customer. We couldn't do business the way we were doing it before, because that just wasn't going to work. Yes. So I guess what I can say to you is your customers can teach you a lot. So as you go through life, listen to your customers. Lots of times they have some pretty good ideas. So another story that I have is that it wasn't long before our GK building was just busted at the seams. Moving the freight up and down all those five floors on a freight elevator just became really hard. So one of the things that we thought would make life easier was to go out and build a building on one floor. We just thought that that would be great. So we hired a local architect, a guy by the name of Jim Kring, and we said, this is what we're looking for, and could you put something together for us so that we can figure out how much it's going to cost? Because once again, we've got to go to Gary, and we've got to figure out if the bank's going to loan us the money, and we need to know the price tag. Well, that was our plan. 
But before we could even get the plan all pulled together, my brother gets a call from a lady he knows who works at Walling Produce Company in Johnstown. She wanted to know if we'd be interested in talking with her friend, Dory Schmieren, who was the owner of Walling Produce at the time. Dory's husband, Jack, had run Walling Produce for decades and he had passed away. And so Dory was done. She wanted out. She wanted out in the worst way. So, you know, the three of us got together and we said, I mean, what could it hurt? Let's go over and listen to her. Let's hear what she has to say. I mean, what's, what's the harm in that? So we go up to Dory's house one evening, and it was just the four of us. And Dory's offer was really pretty simple. You can buy the building, and I'll give you the inventory, or you can pay for the inventory, and I'll give you the building. We couldn't believe what we were hearing, but we said, OK, give us a couple days, and we'll get back to you, and we'll see what we think about it. We, at first thought that this would be a great way to start to diversify our business. We thought that the produce business complemented our current customers, because a lot of our customers were sub shops and little grocery stores, and we just thought it was a, a pretty good fit. Produce was a much steadier business, unlike the carnival business that was summer seasonal, and it depended a great deal on the weather. Plus, at this time, the tobacco industry was really starting to change. Cigarette prices were going up, and we just weren't sure what was going to happen. And then we made a brilliant statement by saying, how hard could the produce business be? I mean, you just pick up that case of tomatoes and put it over there with that box of candy. Well, I can tell you only three guys who had no clue, didn't have a blessed idea about how tough the produce business was would say something like that. But after some consideration, we told Dory, okay, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna buy, your, buy your business. So the first thing we did was we had to cancel the plans on our building that we had put together. And Steve, uh, was able to sell our carnival business plus the five-story GK building in a relatively short period of time, which was phenomenal to us. I mean, that really made it possible to do what we were gonna do next. So we had about six months till we had to move in, so we had time to remodel the Walling Produce building that we were gonna move into, and it needed a lot. Air conditioning, heating, office, showroom, loading docks, alarm system. The, the structure of the building was there, but all the remodeling had to take place. And in the end, it was still only about 20% of the cost of new construction and then having to buy the land. So it was, it was gonna be a good deal for us. So, of course, when we got all the plans finalized and we came up with a price tag, uh, we called Gary again and said, uh, we need some more money. The move into produce really changed us. And you know, looking back, I'm not sure any of us even understood exactly how radical the change would be. The produce business was not like anything we had ever done before. Produce is a very fast-paced business. We had just sold off a piece of our company that we knew how to run. And in exchange, we were buying a business that we knew nothing about. But we said, you know, let's take a chance. It was another new beginning. It was, it was really like starting all over again. So Joe uh, wanted to work the produce department, and Steve and I were fine with his decision. Produce is a business with like its own language. I mean, you have to understand the whole produce business, but there was, there's a distinct language to produce. He made a lot of contacts, and he was learning the business slow but sure. 
Very shortly after we moved into that business, uh, we had heard that a uh, company called PFS, excuse me, which was the local uh, marketing distribution arm for Armor Meats, they just decided that they're going to close their doors and they're done in Johnstown. So we were fortunate. Steve and I decided to walk over one day and see what was going on. So we went over and we were very fortunate. We were able to hire their two best salespeople. So we were able to move about 80% of that business over to us. And we didn't have to buy trucks. We didn't have to buy a building. We didn't have to buy any equipment. We didn't have to do anything except buy the inventory. And of course, you know, getting new customers without having to pay for them, who doesn't like that? that that's, that's fabulous. As I've said, the produce and now meat are in just about every house in the country as opposed to stuffed animals and bingo supplies. So within 18 months, we were out of the novelty and plush animal business and we were into box beef, deli meat, cheese, frozen foods, as well as the produce. This change that we transformed ourselves into, it was really important. It made us different than our competition. Our competition was still selling just cigarettes, tobacco, and candy. And suddenly our customers were able to buy a lot more from us because we were willing to change. We were willing to take that chance and change. Looking back at this time, I've got to ask myself and Steve and Joe the same way. I wonder what our company would look like today if we had said to Dory, ah, we don't want to hear what you have to say. So the message here is, is that you, you got to be open and you got to be willing to take a chance and you got to be willing to change yourself. This was also about the same time when we really started dividing up our responsibilities. Steve took charge of the sales and purchasing. Joe was buying and selling the produce. Ken Turner, he was one of the guys that we picked up from Armor Meats. He was in charge of the meat in the deli, and I assumed the duties of the computer system and the night shift. We started the night shift back then, and we've had a night shift ever since. And the night shift has been really good for us. It was good for us because it gave us the time to get the orders filled, but it made us reliable so that the trucks always left first thing in the morning. We were on time to our customers. And being on time and being there when your customers need you, that's really big. It became our focus. And believe it or not, it still lives with us today because you can still hear Steve saying those exact words today. The next big change came when we decided to move the business for the third time. We were out of space. We were landlocked at the walling site. And this time we were going to follow through. This time we were going to build a distribution center that was energy efficient, temperature controlled rooms, loading docks. So after a search for a while, we decided on the Cambria County Industrial Park, what you're looking at right now. Uh, it was right at the uh, intersection of Route 22, which travels east and west, and 219, which travels north and south. Again, price drove our decision here because the price for the land was half price over Blairsville's Industrial Park and the Richland Industrial Park, which was located in Johnstown. So after we decided that we're going to move there, we called Gary again. Gary, you're getting a lot of publicity here. We, we're going to have to work something out. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, 
So, you know, we were looking for money again to build a new distribution place, and of course, Gary said yes. So we went out and we borrowed a bunch of money. And for the first time, we built a building that was exactly what we needed. I can tell you that moving a business just 25 miles down the road is really hard. It takes a lot of planning, logistics, you know, laying out where you're going to put every inventory item in the building, the warehouse layout, how product's going to flow through the warehouse, phones and computers that have to work on day one. Just simple little things like changing the address and the phone numbers for our customers and our vendors. It's a really big ordeal. And we've added on to our Evansburg facility now three times, almost tripling the size of the original building. And we only added on as we needed more space. And that's, that's what really drove us. We kept on increasing the size of our inventory. We kept on increasing the numbers of SKUs and what we were offering our customers. Uh, right uh, a, a number of years ago, we even added banana ripening rooms. And I can tell you, they're really cool. <laughs> Lastly, the next part of our story starts with a customer in Bellwood, Pennsylvania, which is very close to Altoona, Pennsylvania, a few miles away. This customer owed us a lot of money, more than the store was worth. So we had a choice to make. We can either take a healthy loss or we can take over the store. And so we chose to take over the store. We assumed the store's lease and all the inventory, and we named it Hometown Market. And at first, our plan was to get the store up and running, salvage what we could, and try and find a new owner to buy the store. Joe had stepped away from the produce business uh, just maybe a year or so, not, not, not very long, uh, when Gino came on board. And so Joe said he wanted to take a shot at the grocery store. Well, I can tell you he had his work cut out for him. I, I could go into the roof leaked and there were bad electric circuits and broken refrigeration, but it might be easier to say, I wonder what was good with this store. But we got started. So Joe was able to go in and start to fix problems, one after another. You know, you just set up a priority list and, OK, this needs fixed. We're going to work on this until it's, until it's right. And so that's what he did. Bellwood is a small town and the hometown market was starting to build a good customer base. I mean, we started seeing repeat customers. So after a few years, Joe suggests that maybe we should keep it. Maybe we should run it ourselves. Who knows, it could turn into a good customer for the warehouse. Well, today I can tell you that we have three hometown markets. One in Bellwood, one in Phillipsburg, and one in Holidaysburg. The learning curve, just like anything, to running a grocery store is a work in progress. It just doesn't happen overnight. But today, those three hometown markets, they're doing okay. We never thought that taking over one store in Bellwood would lead us down a path to our own grocery stores. But you heard me say it before, you have to be open and you have to be willing to take a chance. Today, we're adding on to the Phillipsburg store. We've purchased a PA liquor license to be able to sell beer and wine in that store. Because to us, it looks like that's the way the grocery industry is changing in Pennsylvania and we don't want to be left behind. We don't want to be the only grocery store with no beer and wine. You have to stay competitive. Are there more hometown markets in our future? I don't know. Or will something else come up? 
Who knows what's out there? And I can tell you the world is changing real fast. My last observation is that no matter what equipment, what technology, what buildings, or just whatever, it's people that make the difference. We have been very blessed over 39 and a half years to have some phenomenal people working with us, not for us, with us. People will always make the difference in your business. It's people. So, don't let anybody take away your dreams. Go after them. Take a chance. You can do it. We did. Thank you. Good morning. I have the easy part here today. On behalf of our family, we'd like to thank you very much. Thank you for the honor. Appreciate it.